Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Starship stunning fourth test flight. Lawmakers jump for D-Day anniversary. DJI continues ops near Mount Everest. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Starship stunning fourth test flight. Starship's fourth test flight was an engineering and visual success, providing a visual feast along much of the 66-minute journey. Starship successfully lifted off at 7.50 a.m. Central from Starbase in Texas and completed a full-duration ascent burn. Starship executed another successful hot stage separation, powering down all but three of Super Heavy's Raptor engines and successfully igniting the six second stage Raptor engines before separating the vehicles. Following separation, the Super Heavy booster successfully completed its flip maneuver boost back burn to send it towards the splashdown zone and jettison up the hot stage adapter. The booster's flight ended with a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Starship's six second stage Raptor engine successfully powered the vehicle to space. Starship made a controlled re-entry, successfully making it through the phases of peak heating and max aerodynamic pressure and demonstrating the ability to control the vehicle using its flaps at hypersonic speeds. Starlink once again enabled real-time telemetry and live high-definition video throughout every phase of entry, with external cameras providing views all the way. Flight 4 ended with Starship igniting its three center Raptor engines and executing the first flip maneuver and landing burn since its suborbital campaign, followed by a soft splashdown of the ship in the Indian Ocean. After the break, Starliner launches first crew test. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Starliner launches first crew test. The United Launch Alliance was proud to announce the successful liftoff of an Atlas V carrying Boeing CST-100 Starliner out of Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. It's a first and much needed success for the brand after a series of missteps and developmental whiffs along the way. The Starliner is meant to one day make up half of NASA's actual crew delivery craft in tandem with the SpaceX Crew Dragon, a proven performer with a number of launches already under its belt. The new launch carries NASA astronauts Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Suni Williams. Boeing chips a nail in suit loss against electric aircraft startup. A lawsuit against Boeing from electric aircraft startup Zunum went against the big manufacturer, with the jury awarding the little upstart $81 million in damages. Zunum had pressed the case saying that Boeing's investment during a seed round was actually a covert technology transfer, allowing the big dog to snatch its nascent technology and beat the smaller company to market. Zunum was working on a hybrid aircraft to tackle the small regional jet market, anticipating a shift in the travel market. AirVenture gains Lancaster appearance. 
As time runs out before AirVenture 2024, the Royal Canadian Air Force has confirmed it will make an appearance with a vintage World War II Avro Lancaster Mark 10, the last example of the breed on the continent. The addition of the Canadian bird will bring out plenty of other gear too, with the Lancaster being accompanied by the Canadian Forces CF-18 demo team. It's a rare showing for one of the quote, rarest warbirds in North America, for the 71st edition of the country's biggest fly-in. Ag Eagle announces sale to UAE distributor. Ag Eagle Aerial Systems has announced a pretty big order for 20 brand new EB Vision full stack systems to a distributor in the United Arab Emirates, all in all worth about $2 million. The deal will include the whole kit and caboodle for operating the EB, granting the distributor control systems, batteries, backpacks, storage systems, and a small supply of common wear parts for continued manufacturer support. The deal puts a point on their EB Vision's capability for serious surveillance operations, being a relatively cost-effective high-endurance fixed-wing drone platform. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Lawmakers jump for D-Day anniversary. A team of House Republicans was set to jump out of a C-47 Skytrain in commemoration of D-Day's 80th anniversary, joined by a delegation to Normandy, France. The team completed a practice jump last April, getting current and consistent ahead of the big day. At the time, it raised some eyebrows since their side of the aisle only had a single vote majority, and they could scarcely afford to lose one of their own should the jump go awry. In some small bout of consolation, the House has actually gotten younger on average, down to just under 58 years, and a far cry from the Senate's average of 65. Altogether, the jumpers included a bevy of former servicemen who all left at the chance to make a true-to-life jump over Normandy. The head appears to be California Rep. Daryl Issa, who has kept the wire abreast of the project, joined by Texas Reps Ronnie Jackson, Morgan Luttrell, and Dan Crenshaw, Georgian Rep. Rich McCormick, Tennessee Rep. Mark Green, and Florida Reps Corey Mills and Michael Waltz. After these messages, DJI continues ops near Mount Everest. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So for me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller is going to be right for me. Welcome back. DJI continues ops near Mount Everest. DJI has made the first delivery test on Mount Everest for some serious bragging rights. The company joined hands with Nepali's drone specialist Airlift, making use of the infamously brutal climate in order to show off its Flycart 30. The little drone is able to haul 33 pounds of payload at a time, even at altitude near the mountain. The flycart was able to haul a trio of oxygen bottles and 1.5 kilos of other supplies from the Everest Base Camp at 5,300 meters, all the way up to Camp 1 at 6,000 meters. It didn't head back empty-handed either, carrying with it a load of trash for easy disposal. The trip marks a first for the industry, being the first time drones were able to brave the harsh environment to make a successful out-and-back delivery run. The climb up to Camp 1 isn't just a simple jaunt upwards either, requiring the Fly Carry 30 to mount over the Kumbu Icefall, a terrain feature that makes even the helo operators in the area blanch. DJI worked its way up to the test, assessing the Fly Cart 30's ability to hover, climb, and weather the frigid conditions there. Luckily for them, the conditions in May weren't too harsh, allowing them to make the best of the relatively thawed springtime weather. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.